Welcome to Akhand Vidyashram, the first institute of impeccable wisdom, the perfect human menstrual cycle based on Devi Ankh. My mission, the impeccable wisdom, knowing which everything is fully known, my greatest discovery, Devi Ankh, the divine design of nature with which the perfect objects are designed and created. An honest statement. I am glad that I came back to a medical university, not a medical college, to maybe unlearn, relearn and share the knowledge with my students. I am glad I had the privilege and pleasure of reviewing all the medical subjects, research and publications because I was a professor, I was a guide and the scientist for the medical university. Meantime, I realized that focus is on diseases and patients not on preventive medicine. No one is genuinely interested in preventive medicine. But prevention is better than cure. We all know. But today I can honestly say we can curtail aging, we can reverse aging also with the help of Divyank. And that has been the focus today. Now, let's talk about the known human menstrual cycle. The standard international accepted book knowledge goes like this. This particular picture is taken from Encyclopedia Britannica, one of the standard books followed internationally. And incidentally, from school, college, university to the research level, entire world is talking about this kind of menstrual cycle only. They have been trying to bring out only three phases. Five days of bleeding, eight days of proliferation, then ovulation, then secretory phase of 13 days. It has been so simplified, but I do know as a scientist, simplification is good, but oversimplification is not science. In the name of simplification, we should not ignore some of the very important aspects of anything for that matter. But I do find here a lot of things which have been ignored or not given weight is to. But now let me tell you that 5 plus 8 and 13, there is a sequence called Divyank sequence which lands up to 26 days. But as a medical doctor, as a person who is interested in spiritual sciences, our detailed knowledge I have to come to realize this particular description, a menstrual cycle is highly defective. Now let's try to understand what could be the perfect design of nature. The divine design of nature as far as menstrual cycle is concerned, as we rightly know, menstrual cycle drives its name from lunar month or lunar calendar. And lunar month lasts for 29.52 days and not for 26 days. So, question comes to my mind. Have we missed some important event lasting 3.52 days? I'm sure you did. Now, let us explore and explain the missing events of 3.52 days. Let's first talk about Divyank sequence 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 140. This is a sequence which nature has used for mineral kingdom to plant kingdom to animal kingdom and we have seen quite a lot of examples in our video earlier about Fibonacci sequence. From this pattern I can say 5, 8 and 13 are the sequence which menstrual cycle also follows. But since we have missed, so honestly, days before 5 makes more sense than anything else. Then, missing days or 3 days sh should precede the 5 days of bleeding is one thing which emerges from this particular picture. Now the question comes is, what did we miss for 3 days uh, before the menstrual cycle? Let us explore and try to make a real difference. I would say the first phase of proliferation is 3 days before the bleeding. 
I try to bring on the left side the beginning three days. What happens during menstrual cycle? Hypothalamus is known for releasing hormones and hormone respect with respect to menstrual cycle is GnRH. And that releasing hormone comes to anterior pituitary, which helps in the synthesis of follicular stimulating hormone and neutralizing hormones. These two hormones have a very important role in development of the follicles. Now, during those three days, first phase, cohort of 10 new follicles start developing under the influence of GnRH follicular stimulating hormones and luteinizing hormones in the ovaries. This is an ovarian event. Now you can see on the left side. And then ovaries also start producing a little bit of estrogen and progesterone just as a base level, nothing much. But there is another event, important event is endometrium in the uterus. And we have been taught very clearly that there are two layers, functional layer and the basal layer. When, when does the basal layer actually start forming has not been emphasized on. And I am convinced beyond doubt that basal layer starts forming three days before the bleeding. As a result, it cuts off the blood supply to the functional layer of the existing previous thing. As a result, we have the pain cramps, premenstrual tension, descent, and all these symptoms which women by and large experience is premenstrual tension, pain, cramps, depression, anxiety, neurosis, and they need to, they are not able to concentrate another thing. Why these complaints were not given due importance to find out what exactly is the cause for that? Treating symptoms is not uh, best way of uh, dealing with the problem. Find the cause and re remove the cause is the best way of treatment. But this basal layer leads to the disintegration and dissolution of functional layer. As a result, all these complaints are. Had been emphasis on it was a basal layer which was responsible for disintegration and dissolution of functional layer and all the symptoms are because of that rather than talk, give, try to give explanation with the prostaglandin, this, 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 this. I think uh, that was little more than what I could digest. Anyway, doesn't matter. So, three days, the most important events, cohort of 10 primary follicles, then FSH, LH, estrogen, progesterone, basal layer and functional layer. Very, very clear. I think... Uh, there should be no doubt that this phase should have been given importance, which has not given importance. Anyway, now that I brought it to the fore, hereafter all the menstrual cycle throughout the world, from school, college, to university, if they begin with these three days before that, would be much better for the student because my 14 years of teaching medical students, whether MBBS, BDS, Allied Health Sciences, nursing and others, I found they were highly confused with respect to menstrual cycle. And all the students which I have taught could do extremely well because of this in their personal life as well as professional life. Anyway, I am contributor quite happy to do that. Now let's go to the next stage. Second phase is for five days bleeding. Everybody knows about it and I don't think we need to go much deep into it. But only thing I can say Cohort of 10 primary follicles, one becomes dominant and nine becomes recessive and disappear. And follicular stimulating hormones start increasing more. Luteinizing hormone doesn't increase much. Estrogen progesterone also remains more or less down. Estrogen you have slight increase, FSH you have slight increase. And now because of basal layer, you have cut up blood supply to the functional layer as a result is disintegration and sheds during this particular five days. And I think with respect to this particular phase, there should be no doubt this is second phase could be called bleeding phase plus proliferation number two. Third 
phase could be eight days secondary follicular proliferation. And in during this particular phase, follicular stimulate hormone is increasing and luteinizing hormone has started increasing. Estrogen production has started going up, whereas progesterone production hasn't gone so high correspondingly. And there is a thickening of endometrium in the uterus. And I think this should have no doubt. But there is one point which I would like to bring. It's called rule of 21. The perfect follicle at the end of eight days of the phase three, that means should be around 21 to 22 millimeter. If it is 21 to 22 millimeters, pregnancy will be easy. Infertility problem will not be there. If we keep it in mind that our rule should be to produce a follicle of 21 to 22 millimeter, we will get a perfect size over for fertilization. This is also something which I would definitely like to emphasize at this stage. That should be the objective of every gynecologist, obstetrician to help women conceive better and no problem thereafter. From that angle, now let's move on to the fourth, which is ovulation. And it should last for 12 days, 12 hours. And I think uh, it's very clear. There's no doubt about that. Now, just before ovulation, luteinizing hormone, there's a surge. There is increase in estrogen. Both estrogen and LH are more other hormones at a lower level. At this particular juncture, also I like to mention that most of the people, or rather everybody says that human menstrual cycle is not Easter cycle or heat producing cycle. Why it has been said that I don't understand because one of the tests for ovulation is high temperature due to ovulation. Even if it's a half a degree centigrade, there is a heat. But why is estrogen called the estrogen hormone? Because this hormone is also responsible for producing heat. That's the estrus, estrogen. And LH search and this both go to increase the heat so much. And as a result, follicle breaks and ovum is expelled out. I think explaining this particular way in this particular sequence has been a plus point for me to explain menstrual cycle to my students much better. And they all, with the due respect, got sent them in every time they attempted this particular question. And I'm glad I have been able to make a difference, so at least to my students. I think time has come now, the entire world should know what is perfect so that sequence is maintained and people can benefit from. Now, with respect to this, there is no doubt at all. Let's next stage, the fifth phase of eight days. And they say secretory of 13 days, but I have divided 13 into eight plus five. The first eight days is corpus luteum. Why? Let me first now also bring forth one more factor. Key, why progesterone is produced more during this particular phase? Because progesterone means progestation hormone. So this hormone production is more so that it can support pregnancy. And endometrium waits for eight days for fertilized ovum to be implemented within eight days. And during that particular thing, hormone production of progesterone, estrogen is also maintained by corpus luteum. In case fertilization does not take place, there is no zygote to be impl uh, implanted in the endometrium. Signal goes to hypothalamus as well as pituitary to stop producing hormones from pituitary and this and also from the ovaries as a result after eight days things come to an end. So, eight days is very important from secretion point of view. Also, for implement, uh, implantation of zygote. 
I think this is nature designs. So three, five, eight, and eight, and next five. I'm sure everybody would appreciate that this was a good attempt to explain things in a very method, scientifically and mathematically a great pattern on the being sequence. Now let's go to the next stage. Six is called corpus albicans. Why? Because estrogen, as you can see, the production of LH has come down, FSH come down. There is a decline in progesterone secretion as well as estrogen. Both ovaries also stop, pituitary also stops, hypothalamus also stops. As a result, you start seeing decline in almost everything due to those five particular days. So calling it corpus albicans stage and then leading to scar formations is definitely not at all a bad idea. So I think creating a sequence of three, five, eight, ovulation, eight and five, and this is going to be followed by another three of the next phase, brings in the conclusive that this following a ascending and descending pattern of the moon. From new moon to the full moon to the new moon. If this is what nature design is, Liasi for 29 I think this particular uh, pattern what we have tried to bring definitely makes much more sense in the process K. If we teach like this, there shall not be any problem at all. Now, as I, you can rightly see, the size of antrum as well as follicle also increases in the ratio of deviant ratio only. And write down even uh, endometrium, the size also has same corresponding ratio with which it goes. Is it just a mere coincidence or is a divine plan which has been beautifully executed in this particular process? And I'm glad that actually this particular thing has been brought out crystal clear for now the world to rethink and start making a cycle which each and every student throughout the world is able to easily comprehend, understand, so that unlearning and relearning is not required because I found very difficult to explain things with the old one, but with this I found it much easier and I'm sure everybody would agree that this is what is ideal, this is how it should have been done, this is what is required to think. Now I from there, from practical point of view, I would also say, if we have this 22, 21 to 22 mm size of follicle to be the criteria for pregnancy, and then see that if we achieve that particular phase in a systematic way, I think we will be helping many, many uh, patients who are not conceiving to conceive at the earliest because ignorance is not bliss, knowledge gives you the power. For a women's health point of view, I think if they know that what is required for each phase, see like the, some are things which will be required for the phase one, for cohort or 10 primary some, some certain do's and don'ts during bleeding phase, certain phase, proliferation. If with the diet control, exercise and lifestyle changes, if we can keep an eye on both structure as well as that, I think uh, we'll be doing much more contribution towards women health, reproductive health. I think our women who are the creatrix, the future of the humanity throughout the world deserve to be given the important importance which unfortunately, knowingly, unknowingly has been missed. So I'm sure this particular video this particular concept makes every gynecologist, doctor, even as a, every every student, I would say every person by and large, I will not say males and females alone. I think everybody should be concerned about female reproductive health because they are the ones who are responsible for creation of the next generation, edu their education, their cell, their health would make a much more difference to the humanity by, by and large. And I think with that, I'm trying to give 
have given a lot more importance to this and this is also one of the first thing which falls into sequence also after DNA designed with Divyank is much better than Watson Greek's model of DNA and this would be second. Now we are going to see more and more applications as we proceed. I am glad that this has been brought at this particular junction so that we can go to the formation of the child thereafter and how different stages, different things which have not been taught in anatomy, physiology, biochemistry and basic sciences we are able to bring together so that we have a uniform knowledge of perfect anatomy, physiology, biochemistry at, and today we have highly sophisticated instruments to prove all these points and bring it to the fore to the world that this is the perfect model, it should not be any problem thereby a knowledge would help much better. So thank you very much. That has been a great uh, pleasure in sharing something which has made a real difference to me and my understanding and then this. So once again, thank you very much and thanks for all your encouragement.